Good morning, everyone. It's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on Let It Be, and this is page one, page one of Let It Be. This is going to be a fun page, and I just noticed that my page is going to peek out. My pencil mark was going to peek out. So we're going to start with, and these are not the same size, but they happen to be some scraps that I had, but these need to be one inch wide. Actually, we're going to inset the pages a half inch, uh, but I just made these one inch wide, and then we're going to lay down our flap right here at the half inch mark. So the first thing I did was I went around on all four sides and put a tick mark in pencil where the half inch mark is. So I'm going to go ahead and lay these down left and right. Sorry about that. I got Nala hair everywhere, including in my eyes this morning. Um, oh, I tell you, I'm never ever going to buy another German Shepherd. She's killing me. <laughs> Those dogs shed so much. Wouldn't give her up for anything now, but I had, I had no recollection. I had a German Shepherd growing up, but it was really more of an outdoor dog. So I didn't, I didn't notice it. And of course I was in grade school. So when you're in grade school, you don't notice anything. <laughs> All right. Okay, that's one, and then here's our second one. Okay. Okay, now because I, I put the tick marks so low, they're actually still exposed. So it's gonna be very easy for me to line up my left and right um, flaps. So I'm gonna gripe at this, make sure it's not hanging off either edge. That looks good. Okay, and again, the half inch mark is a half inch in from uh, the edge of the pocket page, not the edge of the designer paper. Okay, so there's one. I didn't test it first. Perfect. I hope everybody's doing good. I really love this paper. Um, I think you guys are going to really enjoy it. This is really a good paper collection for um, like decor stuff. If you want to cover boxes, um, do a desktop organizer or anything like that. It's just really pretty. I'm due for a new mat. I've cut this one up so bad I can't. Uh, it always feels like there's something on it, but it's just uh, frayed from all the cutting with a box cutter. Okay, we've got our left and right flaps in. So the next thing we're going to do is I've got my pieces laid out here. So we're going to have a pocket on both sides, left and right. Sorry for the shuffling, but um, I was uh, putting the, um, oh, here it is. I was like, where is it? I'm missing a part of it. Uh, putting the designer papers together last night. And so I was restacking and stacking and checking. 
So there's going to be a pocket that goes on the base. Okay, then we're going to put a pocket on top of the pocket. So we're going to start by adding these pockets. Oh, I forgot to tell you, these are four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight. By the way, if you're new to the channel, if you click show more in the description, um, the first thing you're going to see is a material list. So the materials that we sell in our shop that were used in this project. So it's going to be the designer paper, some of the cardstock, the adhesives and such. And if you continue to scroll down, you'll see the cut list, which has all these measurements and the number, um, so here you're going to need two at four and a half by eight to two at four and a half by eight. So on top of these, we're going to add a pocket. Um, it's going to be a finished uh, four by four and a half inch pocket, but you're going to start with a five by five piece of cardstock, five by five. You're going to score three of the four sides to make your pocket. You need two of those. Let me double check one more time to make sure it's going to fit. It looks good. Okay, we'll do the other side, five by five. Okay, so for each of these pockets, we're going to have an insert that is three and three quarters by seven and a half, three and three quarters by seven and a half, and they're going to go inside these pockets. But we're going to set those aside, and you'll need two of those. Three and three quarter by seven and a half, and there's my two inserts. Okay, sorry, again, Nala hair everywhere. Okay, so the next thing we're going to work on is the flaps that go on top here. We're gonna wait on this because we need to cover this with designer paper before we add this uh, smaller pocket. So we're gonna start um, by adding two flaps going top down. One of them is four and a half by four, four and a half by four. And wait a second, that's not right. Okay, I gotta pause. Sorry, it is right. I, was, I knew there was going to be a gap between this flap and the pocket, and um, it's not the top, it's not the large pocket. It's the smaller pocket where there's a gap. So once we get this one installed, there's going to be a gap between the flap and the pocket, and that's important because we're going to use an insert to hold it closed. Okay, so again, it is four inches across, four and a half inches tall. You're going to score half inch, so you wind up with a, a four by four. I used um, a corner chopper to uh, create a stub like edge. Okay, now we have. That's the small pocket. Oops. Four and a half by four. There we go. Okay, lovely, lovely. 
Now we're going to add another flap just like so. But I want to um, put my, nope, I don't. We're going to go ahead and add this flap now. So this flap is three and a half by four and a quarter. Three and a half by four and a quarter. You're going to score a half inch on the four and a quarter inch side. And it's just going to be centered. So I should have done this before I took the backing off. But I'm going to go ahead and mark my center line here. And then I'm also going to go ahead and just put some weight on this. So it stops flipping up on me. Um, so the center is at uh, two inches from the side. Stop it. You need a minute. Okay. There we go. Not so far, right? So we'll have a uh, Two flaps here and a pocket. And now we're ready, almost ready, I guess. So the next thing we're gonna add is our lower pocket. And these are four and a half by four, four and a half by four. So it's four and a half inches across, four inches tall. And you're gonna score three of the four sides. So again, that's four and a half inches across. So you're gonna score at half inch and and three and a half, half inch and four, sorry, half inch and four. And um, your pocket is going to be a finished three and a half by, by three and a half square. So once you get your four sides down, you're gonna have a three and a half by three and a half inch square pocket. And it's gonna to go toward the bottom so that when these two flaps are closed, we're going to have an insert, which I've already decorated. And I'll talk about that when we get to it. That's gonna hold these flaps all together, okay? So I'm going to do some color blocking here. So before we add that pocket, I'm going to add strips to the bottom of the um, to the bottom of the first pocket. So these are going to go right here. These are a half inch wide. Okay, so you're going to do a half inch on the bottom of both of these. This is from the 8x8 collection. You don't have to use 8x8, you can use the 12x12. 12 12. Um, it's, it's a tighter pattern, but it's not necessarily required. That's just what I picked up. So if you want to do it exactly like I'm doing it, um, which makes it a little more predictable in terms of what paper is left when in the project. This is from the 8x8. So I've also used that same 8x8 to um, make the cover of two of the flaps. Just a tad. Looking good. I need to erase that. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
excuse me. Okay. All right, we're going to add two more pieces. They're going to go on the top of the pocket. Like so. I actually need to look at my reference real quick. It's amazing what you can forget overnight. Yes, that's right. So we're going to do two on the top of the pocket. Okay. Again, these are half inch strips from the 8x8. Eight eight. <laughs> She's feeling uh, rather chatty this morning. We haven't done our W A L K. <laughs> She's letting me know all about it. Here we go. Okay, guys, so that's in. That doesn't look quite right. Let me double check. Half inch. Half inch. All right. Okay, so the next thing I want to do from here, so that we're going to still have to put a piece of designer paper here. I'm not ready to do that, but I am ready to go ahead and add. My yellow paper here. Is that what I decided to do? That doesn't seem right. Yes, it is. Okay. Because then I have, uh, yeah, that makes sense. So the yellow, same pattern. Actually, I'm rethinking that now. I might want to add a new pattern here and use this someplace else. Um, I have to see if I've got, uh, what I'd like to use is the yellow that has words on it if I have it. And then this beautiful B paper is, I gotta double check. For some reason, I think it's from the 12 by 12. No, it's from the eight by eight. And that's gonna be on the top flap. So I know I wanna use that, so let's go ahead and get that done. Oops. If I get too far ahead of myself, I um, I forget what's planned where, because I got too many loose papers floating around. Okay, and again, the, I I chomp the corners on both the small, the first and second flap. I'm telling you guys, you're going to love it. Okay, and then this is going to be, well, I, thought, I haven't put my small pocket, the insert that goes into this pocket. Okay, so we've got a little bit more work to do. So this is from the ephemera pack, 
and it is the A side, and then this is the B side of the same ephemera card, and then I used uh, more of the 8x8 um, honeycomb uh, pattern here on the bottom. Also, they felt they kept wanting to bend here. I'm using 65 pound Nina brand, so I doubled it. So I just added um, another piece of cardstock to the back to make it nice and rigid, it makes it easier to go into the pocket. And I did that because I wasn't sure I was going to have enough designer paper to cover the back. Now, if you cover the back with designer paper, you do not need to add that second layer of black cardstock. But I'm thinking that I might wind up a little short and maybe wind up doing something simple like adding two pieces of trim, but not cover the whole thing. So that's really a preference. Um, for now, I've got two layers, but you may want to uh, just do the top and hold off and see how we do with paper um, as we get toward the end of the book. Okay, so again, I'm going to go look for an alternate yellow, and I'm hoping, I'm hoping that um, one of the yellows has, um, you know, the words on it, like like this red sheet. And if if I can find that, that's what's going to go on that second panel. Otherwise, I'm gonna look for, like I said, just any alternate yellow. So I'll be back in a few minutes and I'll try to take care of Nala while I'm gone so you guys don't have to listen to her whine when I get back. So be back shortly. Okay, everyone, um, sorry, I was away for a little while. Um, and we're going to continue working on page one. Um, earlier, I was going to put one strip of yellow here and one on the bottom. And then when I got everything constructed, I noticed that part of the yellow was peeking out. It was actually supposed to be underneath the um, larger of the two flaps. So I pulled it up and I am going to use this um, pattern. And I left part of that out of the video, but if you see this paper, that is why, um, why you're seeing it. <clears throat> this green is from the 8x8 collection pack. And I think this is actually the right orientation. There's little streams of uh, lines going behind the polka dots, but I want it to go left and right. Um, I just like the look a little bit better. So we're gonna put these down. I um, actually got a chance to go see a good friend of mine for lunch today. I haven't seen her since. The end of last year so that was very nice um, so I did get out for a little bit today it was lovely had some sushi and that was always that's always a treat so there's hopefully I'm gonna get most of that covered up yeah it looks like I am let's go at a little bit of an angle yeah perfect so that's just little bits of paper that are left and I'm just tearing, if you have to do this, and the way I've constructed the video, you're not even going to see me put the yellow strip down. But if you ever have to do it, um, what I did use was a spatula, and I went all the way around the outside edges. Because as you peel up the paper, you want to make sure you're not peeling toward the edge of your black cardstock. Because if anything tears, you want it to be on this part, so it's underneath what you're going to replace it with. Um, so uh, I just lifted it a little bit at a time and I actually added a little bit of water to help ease it because I had laid it down with glue and uh, the water softens it up a little bit too so that um, you can peel toward the center of whatever that strip was. And then you have to make sure as you're measuring your replacement piece, you know, that you're laying it in and making sure when you trim it, it's going to be large enough to go back over this this mess that I created. <laughs> you know I don't like it. I'm going to try it the other way. Sometimes it just fits a little bit better one way than the other. It's worth trying. Okay, there we go. So that's in. I like this page, it's fun. Okay, so then I went back and found an alternate yellow. Oh, did I tell you? Eight by eight. 
And this is from the Patterns Collection, and that is what's going to go right here. Did I ink it? Yes, I did. See, so it makes that nice little frame around it. I'm really happy with that. Okay, and then... Um, Pull that down just a little. Then this is what I had originally planned to go here. So I'm going to go ahead and use it on the flip side. It's already trimmed out, inked, and ready to go. And then the other reason I like it here is because it's pulling that strip at the bottom of the page back in. Oops. My insert's in there. I'm going to make sure it's short enough that it doesn't get stuck in the hinge. Everything looks beautiful. Okay, we still have our inserts. And then we need to cover the back of those. So what else? So the last thing on top is we're gonna add this pocket. And this pocket is four and a half, four and a half by four, four and a half by four. I think I went over that once before. And it's going to go a quarter inch up from the bottom. So you're going to have a gap between the small flap, the flaps and this, and we want that because we're going to use an insert to hold everything in place here, okay? So come up about a quarter inch from the bottom, and I'm going to mark that because I want to make sure that it's consistent across these two panels. So I'm going to put myself a little reference line in here, and I'll erase um, I'm going to test it, make sure if I put my pocket there, it's still going to close. Looks good. I did a quarter inch from the bottom of the yellow so it's actually a little bit higher um, but you can do it from the end of the panel either one as long as the pocket is clear of the flaps it'll be fine everything will work the way it's supposed to wow I didn't want to grab that tape and then I'm going to center it and in this case I'm just going to eyeball it You know what, I'm gonna go a little lower. So what I'm what I'm looking for is an even border left, right, and bottom. And 
when I lay it in, I notice that I can probably go down a little more. So I'm going to go below the line I, I did. Then I'll use this as the guide for the pocket neck next to it. Okay, there we go. Lovely. Okay, we're going to put this red here. Then I'm going to clean up my lines. It's already inked. Uh, this happens to be from the 12 by 12. I can tell by the scale, the pattern on the flip side. Need a real eraser. I don't know what I've done with my needed eraser. Okay. Let me breathe. And you know what? It's a quarter inch from the black. So if you do a quarter inch from the edge of the um, the, the bigger pocket, it'll work out right. But I just want it to look flush straight across, so I'm going to do my pencil line. Now, this one I had already put down the red paper, but you see what we're doing here. Pretty obvious. Okay. Okay, there we go. Coming right along. Okay, now we've got our inserts. Test them, make sure everything's working out as planned. There we go, lovely, lovely. Okay, so there's a couple more things to do. We need to get the back of the top flap covered. I'm glad that didn't tear. And then we need to cover um, the pocket area. Let's see pocket what do we want to do here I'm going to look at my scraps and see if I can't use something that I've trimmed off from somewhere else that's a little too much we don't want to use the green because we've already used it maybe we'll use this what do you guys think I like it so Yeah, I like it. We're going to trim this down to fit. One of the things that I'm doing when I'm laying it in is I'm lining up the edge of my designer paper here with the edge of the paper on the top and the edge on the of the paper on the bottom. Okay, then I'm going to come over and I'm going to mark the top and the bottom so that when I trim this down the right height, this should fit right here and carry this beautiful line all the way up through the top. If I can only see better. This mark is so faint. Hi, Ella. There you go. Hi, Sugar. She's learned that if she comes in here and sticks her nose under my elbow, it makes me, makes me jerk away from the table. She That's her new thing right now. Somehow she got her head between my armpit and the tremor. <laughs> Nala, that's enough. Don't be ugly. Okay, that looks good. That's a little taller than I need, so I'm going to take 
So maybe a quarter inch off. Let's see. That's still too much. I really only want a little bit to go inside the pocket. Now, one of the reasons I kept this top flap so simple is because this becomes sort of the feature on the page when all the flaps are closed. Because normally I would gravitate toward this being on top, but I didn't really want to, I didn't want this to have to compete with its background. So that's just the logic there. I, I always try to share with you guys what my thought process is as I'm going along and why I'm choosing what I'm choosing. One of the reasons I like this page so much is it's using all the colors in the collection. Is that right? It's got green, red, yellow, black. I think that's everything in the collection. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my lines and they look pretty beautiful. I'm pretty happy. one more piece to put in. Kind of crooked, so I'm going to double check and make sure that I marked it in the right place. Okay. All right. Hot, cold, hot, cold. Let's see. Now I've got. Now I wouldn't mind pulling that red back in here. That's not so bad. Let me see if I can't find another piece of this laying about. Good to go.
Okay, so I'm going to chomp my corners. What I like to do if I've already got this down is line it up edge to edge, chomp my corner, slide it over, line it up edge to edge, chomp my corner. And I like to do it this way so I can see where the previous cut line was. And then I just try to cut right where it was previously cut. And do the same thing, slide it over to the other side. Make sure my chomper is all the way open. There we go. I'll ink those two little edges. I like it. <coughs> Pardon me. <clears throat> okay. Beauteous. Yeah, and I, I think it, if you don't put designer paper on the back, I do think you should add your extra cardstock. It's got a lot to hold down. Um, that, that'll help it be nice and rigid and hold everything in place, nice and flat. Okay, so we've gotta get one more piece. Um, I wish I didn't have to cut through this, but I do need another piece. It doesn't really look directional, does it? Got a pesky little gnat floating around in here, which is odd because I don't eat in here. And usually all I have is water. I don't know where he came from or what he wants. One of the things you'll notice if you um, are new here is I cut everything as a rectangle um, from my papers. I'll never cut like a part of a, I wouldn't cut just this piece out of it. It's so time consuming. You get better um, utilization of your paper, but it's so much more time consuming. So everything you see here, you should, you should be able to cover in your album by cutting straight through an eight by eight or a 12 by 12. Not should be. You will be able to, providing you do. You know, you're, you're doing it the same way as I am. I keep forgetting I've got that little hinge here. I almost trimmed this too short. Okay. Okay, good to go. Yes, we are. So we we'll turn it around, chomp my corners. Make sure it's all the way open. I like the little details. It adds more time, but I, I do like it. Also, I think that when you have um, decorative corners, whether it's rounded or whatever, it's kind of an indicator that it's um, an interactive element. You know, it sort of points to the fact that there's something underneath it. In this case, it's pretty obvious because the whole thing is framed out by the yellow, but it's it helps you know that you can lift it up one more time and see what's underneath that. Okay, so that's 
one side. I am using mahogany powder puff. And it's nice and rich. I just like to wipe, uh, knock off my white pour. I don't like to distress into my pattern with graphic because it's already got some distress. It just, it already looks somewhat distressed and antiqued, just the nature of the print itself. Okay, so that's that. All right, I need to take a break. And when I come back, we are going to pick uh, the inside papers. So, so far, so good. Oh, there's still still two elements that we're going to add to this. I forgot. And, um, and part of that is going to be um, deciding how we're going to keep everything closed up inside the album. So there's just a couple more things to do yet. So moving right along. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create. I'll be back soon so that we can finish up this page.